بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to another session of Tafsir al-Quran where we go through and study the meaning of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Inshallah uh, today uh, we'll be continuing with Surah al-Baqarah of course and uh, inshallah the ayat, the verses that we aim to cover today are verses 130, 131, and 132. So inshallah, those are the three verses that we aspire to cover in today's session. As always, inshallah, I'm going to begin with the recitation of the verses that we're going to be studying, inshallah. Uh, after that, uh, I will read from... Uh, a translation of the Quran So that we have a summary uh, A summarized understanding Of the meaning of the verses And then inshallah We'll go further into the discussion uh, Where we focus on the lessons Reflections uh, The wisdom That we can derive from these verses Inshallah bi'nillah A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَنْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَا سَفِيهَ نَفْسَهُ وَلَقَدْ اصْطَفَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ <clears throat> وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ يَا بَنِيَّ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى لَكُمُ الدِّينَ فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ The translation of the verses uh, that we just recited Verse number 130, the translator writes, Who but a fool would forsake the religion of Abraham? We have chosen him in this world, and he will rank amongst the righteous in the hereafter. Verse number 131, His Lord said to him, Devote yourself to me. Abraham replied, I devote myself to the Lord of the universe. Verse 132, And commanded his sons to do the same, as did Jacob. My sons, God has chosen your religion for you, so make sure you devote yourselves to him till your dying moment. <clears throat> so, as I mentioned previously, we're studying verses 130 through 132. And <clears throat> as we always do here in these sessions, I like to start by addressing any circumstances of revelation, anything that might have been going on at the time of the Prophet ﷺ when these verses were revealed, and also talking about how this fits into the greater context of the verses that we have been studying. So when it comes to the circumstance of revelation There is an incident that is mentioned by some of the scholars of Tafsir <clears throat> Ibn Kathir, uh, Qurtubi and others have mentioned this um, That Abdullah bin Salam radiallahu ta'ala anhu Who was a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He was originally a member and a, in fact a leader of the Jewish community in Medina Before the arrival of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived very, It's a very famous incident, he accepted Islam um, He went to go hear the public address of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Afshu salam wa at'imu ta'am wa silu al-arham wa sallu bil-layli wa nasu niyam Tadkhulu al-jannata bi salam The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that spread peace 
um, or that can also be translated as spread greetings amongst one another, uh, feed food to one another, um, keep good family relations and strengthen the bonds of family. And lastly, the Prophet ﷺ said, pray at night while all of humanity is asleep. And you shall all enter paradise safe and sound. So he had attended this public address of the Prophet ﷺ. And when he heard this, he very famously says that I recognized from his face that he is not a liar. I recognize from his face that he is not uh, a liar. He is not lying. He is telling the truth. And he is someone who sp speaks the truth. And he end ended up accepting Islam. So this individual, companion of the Prophet ﷺ who accepted Islam, he had two nephews that were very close to him, that were very near and dear to him. One's name was Salama and the other's name was Muhajir. So he called both of them to Islam. He invited both of them to Islam. He gave them da'wah. He presented the message of Islam to them and encouraged them to embrace and accept Islam. So he um, he said to them to be more specific, قَدْ عَلِمْتُ مَا أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ قَالَ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ إِنِّي بَاعِثٌ مِنْ وُلْدِ إِسْمَعِيلَ نَبِيًّا إِسْمُ أَحْمَدٍ فَمَنْ آمَنَ بِهِ فَقَدْ إِهْتَدَىٰ وَرَشَدَىٰ وَمَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِهِ فَهُوَ مَلْعُونٌ that whoever follows, believes in this Prophet, you know that he was foretold of. And so whoever believes in him and follows him is on the truth and on guidance and upon righteousness. And whoever rejects him, does not believe in him, then that person is cursed by God. So one of his nephews, Salama, he ended up accepting Islam. The other one, Muhajid, he did not accept Islam. He refused the da'wah from his uncle. And so then this verse was revealed <clears throat> where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying who can be more foolish than the one who turns away from the um, legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam and from the religion and the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam so that's kind of the backstory here overall of course we understand the context that <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the establishment of the Kaaba in Mecca and talked about the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the dua and the supplication of Ibrahim and how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is from the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself said that I am the answer to the prayer of my forefather Abraham. So subsequently, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam and how the Prophet sallallahu and the Muslims are the ones who are actually adhering to the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam and they are honoring that uh, tradition of Ibrahim alayhi salam and how many of these people who were opposing the Prophet sallallahu salam and trying to refute the Prophet sallallahu salam the Jewish tribes, the Christian tribes how they actually are out of line with the legacy and the message of Ibrahim alayhi salam <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now says, we're going to go through the verses, make sure that we are able to understand and appreciate all the uh, the words of the verses and the language used herein. And then, of course, as always, we'll talk about some of the lessons that we can derive from here, inshallah. <clears throat> so Allah says, well, man, who, who is or who can be? يَرْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ يَرْغَبُ عَنْ The word رَغْبَ expresses in the Arabic language, it expresses someone having strong feelings, toward, uh, someone having strong feelings about something. Now, then you use a preposition in classical Arabic. So if you use the preposition fi, which means in, then that means someone is very interested in something. رَغْبَ فِي Someone is interested in something. All right? They're invested into something. And if you use the preposition an, from, like away from, then it refers to someone turning away from something, becoming disinterested in something. 
So Allah says, وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ The word Milla here represents, we've talked about it previously as well, it refers to the religion, the way, the legacy, the, the belief of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So the person who becomes disinterested, who turns away from the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam, who would do that illa except safiha nafsahu? Now the word safiha comes from the word like safi, which means to be foolish. Uh, it's also used in the meaning of ignorance. It also refers to ignorance. The root of the word asu safi al khiffatu. It means to be uh, not very well grounded or well founded. And from that, that's exactly where you get the idea from of calling someone foolish, that someone is not very well educated. They're not thinking very properly. They're, this Whatever they're doing is not very well thought out. Um, and there's in fact a hadith of the Prophet wasallam that says, Al-kibr, arrogance, conceit, is what? An tusafi al haqqa that you take the truth lightly. You take the truth lightly. And that you put people down. You look down on people. All right. So the word safiha can refer here to ignorance. Safiha um, nafsahu would mean that somebody has imposed ignorance upon themselves. They're refusing to open their mind. They're refusing to really see what's in front of them, to listen to what's around them. They're refusing to open their mind and open their hearts to the truth. They're not taking the opportunities of learning seriously. Safiha nafsahu. So somebody is making a fool out of themselves. All right. It can also mean ignorance. Somebody is imposing ignorance upon themselves. So, <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, who would abandon, turn away from, be disinterested, be uninterested in the religion of Abraham, except for somebody who is deluding themselves, fooling themselves, and is basically living a life of ignorance, that only a fool would do so. And so to put it into different words, basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying only a fool. Because we have this principle in Arabic grammar that a nephew, right, um, to, to talk about, you know, like posing a question or negating a statement, followed by then making an exception is a way and a method of creating exclusivity in meaning. So what I mean by that, what that means is that only a fool, only a fool would be uninterested in the way, the religion, the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدِ اسْتَفَيْنَاكُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَلَقَدِ اسْتَفَيْنَاكُ فِي الدُّنْيَا Allah is now talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam saying, and indeed, undoubtedly, for certain, we chose him in the life of this world. We chose him, selected him, and gave him great virtue, great honor, great distinction in this world, meaning we made him a messenger and a prophet. And he is will be from amongst the righteous. He will be in the ranks of the most righteous in the life of the hereafter. And he will be from amongst the ranks of the most righteous in the life of the hereafter. In verse number 131, Allah says, إِذْ That remember. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing our attention to something that occurred previously in history. Remember, when his Lord said to him, Submit, aslim. This is the verb from the word Islam. Submit, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ He said that indeed I have submitted to the Lord of the worlds. وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِهِ And it did not stop there with him. وَصَّى means to bequest something. To make, a, like to write something into your will. وَصِيَّة and it's used in the meaning of impressing the importance and the significance of something upon someone. 
Like we say oftentimes to someone, if you tell them a number of things, you say, if you remember nothing else, remember this one thing. Right? Never ever forget this one thing. So he, the most emphasis he placed upon, uh, of all the things he taught to his children and gave to his children, the thing that he placed the greatest emphasis upon was the same thing. Submit to your Lord. Live a life of devotion and obedience and humility before Allah. And Jacob, the grandson of Ibrahim السلام, also did the same thing. To show that this was a tradition that continued on from there. Ya Bunaya. And he goes on to say that, oh my children, inna Allah astafa That indeed God has chosen for you this religion. Ya Baniya, Ya Baniya, excuse me, Ya Baniya, O my children, O my offspring, inna Allah astafa lakum that indeed God has chosen for you the religion. Which religion? Islam. We're talking about Islam because he said Aslim. Falatamutuna. So do not die illa except that wa antum that you are Muslimun submitted to Allah. Do not die except that you are submitted to Allah. What does that mean? That is an expression in the Arabic language. Like for instance, if you were to say to someone, La tu salli illa khashi'an. Do not pray except with khushur. That doesn't mean you're telling someone not to pray. What you're saying is that make sure you pray with khushur. Be mindful of praying without khushur. So similarly saying, لا تموتون إلا وانتم مسلمون means that always remain in a state of submission to your Lord so that when death comes to you, you may leave this world and you may depart this world and die in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Muslim. Okay, so that is the breakdown of the words that are present here, the language of the ayat as we always like to do. Now let's go into some of the lessons that we can derive from here. <clears throat> the first thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that who is more foolish than the one who turns away from and deprives themselves from and of the legacy, the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And interestingly, Al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Jahila nafsahu wa khasira nafsahu. <clears throat> Turning away from the deen and the religion is the greatest form of ignorance and it is the greatest form of self-sabotage. Self-sabotage. Right, we oftentimes talk about ignorance and foolishness and you know harming oneself and sabotaging oneself. And there's definitely a lot of different ways that people do that. But the greatest and the most tragic form of that is to actually deprive yourself of the proper religion and to keep yourself ignorant of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guidance from God. <clears throat> Abu Ubaidah another one of the scholars and the authorities of tafsir, he says, ahlaka nafsahu wa aw baqaha. All right? That someone who turns away from the religion and deprives themselves of the religion and the understanding of the religion is someone who has destroyed themselves and doomed themselves. So there is nothing more wrong and more foolish than doing so. And it's specifically calls it and identifies it as a legacy of Ibrahim, the religion of Ibrahim. Why? Why is that? Okay. Well, because the religion, it's the religion that all the prophets were sent with, including the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But why specifically identify with Ibrahim alayhi salam? So there's a few things. Number one, obviously what we talked about previously, that the foundation, so much of the foundation was laid by Ibrahim alayhi salam. So much of the foundation was laid by Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Kaaba was founded by Ibrahim alayhi salam. It was, was the, excuse me, the foundations of the Kaaba were raised. Yarfa'u Ibrahimu al qawaida The foundations were raised by Ibrahim alayhi salam. Secondly, there's great wisdom in this as we talked about it previously as well because the Jews, they recognize Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
the Christians, they recognize Ibrahim alayhi salam, and even the mushrikun of Mecca, <clears throat> even the idol worshippers of Mecca, they recognized the uh, the the virtue of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Even they recognized the virtue of Ibrahim alayhi salam and held him in high esteem. So by the Prophet sallallahu message, the message of the Quran being connected to Ibrahim alayhi salam. It is to bring them closer and to show them that if you truly actually honor the legacy of Ibrahim, <clears throat> if you truly follow the teachings of Ibrahim alayhi salam, then the Quran, the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, why would you not embrace these things? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this is something that is constantly emphasized throughout the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nahl, Surah number 16, Ayahs 122 through 122, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifa. That indeed Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was a, an ummah in and of himself. He was a profound leader. Qanitan lillah. And he was very, very devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hanifan. And he was focused solely and only on the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَمْ يَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And he was not from those who associate partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. شَاكِرًا لِأَنْعُمِي He was very grateful for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِجَتَبَاهُ وَهَدَاهُ إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ That Allah chose him and guided him to the straight path. وَآتَيْنَاكُ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا And we granted to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the life of this world, you know, beautiful things and excellence. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْأَخْرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And just like we saw here, that in the life of the hereafter, he is indeed amongst the righteous servants of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah number 3, surah Tali Imran, verse number 67, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا That Abraham was not a Jew nor a Christian. وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا But rather he was a... Um, worshipper of one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala submitted to the will of God and he was not from those who associate partners to Allah that indeed the ones who are closest in affiliation to Ibrahim alayhi salam are those who follow him and this prophet, this messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very specifically, وَالَّذِينَ amanu, And those who believe and follow the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَاللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah is the ally of the true believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another place in the Qur'an, uh, in Surah Al-Ankabut, in Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Surah number 29, ayah number 27, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ Excuse me, not Surah number 29, I'm misquoting the Surah number. But nonetheless, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ That we gifted to him, to Ibrahim, Isaac, his son is Haq and Yaqub, Jacob as a grandson. وَجَعَلْنَا فِي ذُرِّيَّتِهِ النُّبُوَّةَ وَالْكِتَابَ And we granted to him amongst his progeny, prophets, prophethood, and revelation. وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَجْرَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا And we rewarded him with great noble things in the life of this world. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْأَخْرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ You see this constant theme and in the life of the hereafter, he is amongst the ranks of the most righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Zukhruf, verse number 28, was, um, that وَجَعَلَهَا كَلِمَةً بَاقِيَةً فِي عَقِبِهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this message of Ibrahim alayhi salam remain after him and amongst his progeny. So that is the reason why Ibrahim alayhi salam is being highlighted here. Number one, because of the virtue of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Number two, it also serves a very strategic purpose in trying to bring people closer to embracing and accepting Islam. Um, and then 
the in the next ayah we talked about id qala lahu rabbuhu aslim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him and told him to submit and this is as i mentioned this is the verb that relates to islam the word islam itself so when it comes to this it's very important to understand that this aslim right Ibrahim alayhi salam is being commanded to accept Islam but he's a prophet of God is he already upon the truth is he already upon Islam so number one through him of course this teaching is being given to the people and secondly it carries more it carries many layers and has many connotations okay has many implications of course Islam and iman means to believe islam means to submit to enter into the fold of the religion and of course one comment that needs to be made here is the differentiation between the terminology of islam and iman idha iftaraqa ijtama'a wa idha ijtama'a iftaraqa when they are used separately they can refer to one another but when they're both used in the same place they have very exclusive very particular meanings islam is more about entering into the fold of the religion submitting and accepting the mandates of the religion Iman is for that faith and that belief and that conviction and that devotion and dedication to cultivate and to grow within one's heart. All right? And this is something that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the Quran in Surah Al-Hujurat that there was a tribe of Bedouin people that came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said we are believers. They became Muslim and said we are believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ وَعَمَنَّا The Bedouins declare that they are believers. قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا Tell them that you do not truly believe yet. You are not yet amongst the ranks of true believers. Sincere, strong believers. وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا Rather say we have submitted, we have entered into the fold of Islam. وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ This iman has not yet taken root within your heart. It has not yet grown within your heart. وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ So that's one interesting differentiation I wanted to make. Now coming back to the question here of Ibrahim a.s. When Allah tells Ibrahim a.s. to submit, what does that mean? Of course he submitted already to Allah. He's a prophet and messenger of God. All right? He is a messenger of submission. He is delivering the message of submission. So as I said, this is a very common you know, phenomenon within the Qur'an is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for instance to do something, right? وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ تَرَفَيِ النَّهَارِ Establish the prayer. Of course the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is already establishing the prayer. But by commanding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is actually we, we're the ones who are receiving that instruction through the Prophet ﷺ. Number two is, it also refers to acting very quickly. That if someone is truly submitted, so it's saying don't just submit, but then become true in your submission. And true submission is that not only am I recognizing and accepting that these are the mandates and the commands from Allah, but then I'm also implementing them, executing them, Immediately, I make it as I, I have a sense of urgency about fulfilling my mandate. Secondly, it also refers to an idea of sincerity. If you're truly submitted, like when we talk about loyalty, right? If I have an enemy and my friend, I see him fraternizing, associating, affiliating with this person who is my enemy, I'll say, What kind of a friend are you? And he's like, What? There's nothing. Again, there's nothing that says you can't be friends with two people, right? There's nowhere, nowhere does it say that you can only have one friend. And I'll say, yeah, but there's an issue of loyalty here. So similarly, when it comes to our devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there can be no competition for that. There can be no rivalry therein. Akhlis ibadataka lillah, right? So basically, practice purity and sincerity in your loyalty and devotion to Allah. Number three, it also carries the meaning of consistency. So we talked about quality, now consistency. That remains steadfast on this. فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ As Allah told the Prophet ﷺ in the Qur'an, be steadfast upon what you have been commanded to do. 
All right. <clears throat> so these are some of the meanings that are built into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling Ibrahim alayhi salam to submit. Now, what does Ibrahim alayhi salam do? Immediately he responds by saying, Qala asrimtu li Rabbil Alameen. Indeed, I have submitted to the Lord of the worlds. Now, he could just respond by saying, I've submitted. Or I've submitted to you. But he says, I've submitted to the Lord of all the worlds. Right? And that is to emphasize that that is the level of my submission that I grasp, I understand exactly whom I am submitting to. And his might and his power and his majesty. And I am humbled before him. So you see this excellence, this ihsan in the submission of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes on to say here that وَوَصَّابِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِهِ And Ibrahim alayhi salam, he impressed the significance of this upon his children. So number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just simply say he informed, he taught, he commanded, but he used the word wasiya, which means like a dying request, a last request that is made of someone. Like writing something into your will. That if nothing else, do not forget this. So that shows the importance that he placed upon it. That he did it with great significance and importance. That this is very, very important. Number two, he imparted this advice to his children. And once, and again, he's a prophet and messenger of Allah, so he gave that advice to all of humanity. But Allah specifically is mentioning that he ex had an exclusive discussion about this with his own children. And this once again, I talked about this earlier, this highlights the fact that caring and being invested into the um, well-being of those that are closest to us is not contradictory or contrary to Islam or the character of prophethood. In fact, it is an essential part and component of it. خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu says, that the best amongst you is the one who is the best to their families. And I am indeed the best to my family. As Allah says, save yourselves and your families from the fire of hell. Protect you, yourself and your families from the fire of hell. So showing that prioritization and that emphasis being placed upon the people that are closest to us in our relationship with them. Thirdly, it also says, Ya Baniya. He's addressing all of his children generally. He's not playing favorites amongst them, but he's sharing it generally with all of them. And that shows, number one, that what I'm giving to you here is very important. All of you need it. And number two, it also, once again, shows the ethics of even parenting. That you make sure that none of your children feel discarded or neglected or deprived in any way. The next very interesting thing here is that he emphasized this. And he said, In Allah Safa Lakumuddin, God has chosen this religion of submission, Islam for you. And he didn't say now or when you grow up or in the future, or until further notice. No, he left it very open in general. Because the most important thing for someone, no matter what phase of their life they're in, is their spiritual well-being. Even when children are small, where they are not obligated, they do not have liability in the religion, they're not, they do not have taklif, they're not mukallaf, right? they're not mandated and obligated by anything. But even then, their spiritual well-being is still very important. The, the spirituality of their parents and the people around them and the people raising them has a huge impact on them. Teaching them early on to have a spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
in youth, when a person becomes a young adult, the religion is the most important thing. That's why on the Day of Judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا يَزَالُ قَدْمَا إِبْنُ آدَمَ حَتَّى يُسَلَ عَنْ أَرْبَعٍ That the feet of a person will not move from their place until they're asked about four things. They're questioned about four things specifically. And عُمْرِهِ فِي مَا أَفْنَا How did you use the lifetime you were given? وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِي مَا أَبْلَى In your youthful years, where did you invest those? And then when a person reaches their middle age, where they're responsible for other people now, for themselves and for the sake of the people they're responsible for. And then when a person reaches old age, when they're about to leave and depart from this world, that actions are based off of their conclusions. Whosoever's last words are the is the name of Allah, whoever's last words are La ilaha illallah, that person has entered paradise. So he's not putting any kind of a time limit in the stipulation on this. And that's why he says that Falata Mutunna illa wa antu Muslimun. That's why I live constantly in a state of submission, so that whenever death comes to you, you are a Muslim. You are submitted to Allah. And the last point here that I want to emphasize about his giving this advice. Notice that when he's advising them about the religion and he's advising them to remain submitted to Allah and to keep firm with their deen and their religion, he does not include any other advice over here. Because this is so important, this needs to be a discussion in and of itself. I do not want to bring up anything else here which could distract or conflate this in any way. But you need to focus on this. Solely and only on this. So very, very powerful. فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ So do not leave this world except that you are in a state of submission. And um, some of the scholars, they write about this. Imam uh, Ar-Razi, rahimahullahu ta'ala, he says about this. He says that بَعَثُهُمْ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ فَالْمُرَادُ بَعَثُهُمْ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ وَذَلِكَ لِيَنَّ الرَّجُلْ إِذَا لَمْ يَأْمَنِ الْمَوْتَ فِي كُلِّ طَرْفَةِ عَيْنٍ ثُمَّ إِنَّهُ أُمِرَ بِأَنْ يَأْتِيَ بِالشَّيْءِ قَبْلَ الْمَوْتِ صَارَ مَأْمُورًا بِهِ فِي كُلِّ حَالٍ Because we fundamentally don't know when we're going to die, when we're going to leave this world, telling someone to die in a state of Islam is basically telling them to always remain in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, we know that the uh, whatever condition someone dies in is how they will be resurrected. So if we die in a state of submission to Allah, we shall be resurrected in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And <clears throat> something that's very interesting and beautiful is that good leads to more good. Right? Good begets more good. And this is exactly, and, and bad and evil begets more evil, leads to bad things. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so beautifully in the Quran, That whoever gives charity and is conscious of God and practices, you know, truthfulness and excellence in their deen and in their religion with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will make more good, we will, we shall facilitate more good for that person. And whosoever is stingy and they disassociate themselves from their relationships, and they reject the truth. Then we will make more evil come into their way. We will, they will naturally, they will become more inclined towards evil. And we will open the doors of more wretchedness and evil for them. And hardship. So we see that when somebody lives a life of submission to Allah, and they can focus on this thing. And it might seem like, well, what about all the other obligations and tenets of the religion? Focus on this one thing. Submission to Allah. Loyalty to Allah. Devotion and dedication to Allah. Confirm that one thing. 
And that one thing will lead to many, many other things. All the other good will basically stem and come and be born out of that one good thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this submission to Allah, this is literally the base and the foundation of our religion, Islam. In the deen, in the lahil Islam. As Allah says, that the only acceptable religion in the eyes of God is Islam. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقُبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ That whoever tries to seek out any other religion other than Islam, it shall not be accepted from him. And that person in the life of the hereafter will be from those who are doomed and ruined. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm on our Islam. This is what's built into our fitrah, our essential and integral nature, kind of like what, what can be referred to our quintessential nature. Submission to Allah, the recognizing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's very important to maintain that and to work on that and to preserve that and come back to that by connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that submission to Allah is dignity. The Prophet Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, never found it beneath himself, below him, to be a servant of God. And nor do the great angels of Allah find it beneath themselves or below them to be the servants of Allah, to be submitted to Allah, to be in submission to Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam is Khalilullah, our Messenger sallallahu alayhi is Habibullah. The friend of God, the beloved of Allah. Right? And how did they acquire that status? Through submission to Allah. The Prophet ﷺ says, Shall I not be a grateful slave of my Lord? And this idea of submission is echoed throughout our deen and religion. In Surah Surah An-Nisa, Surah number four, ayah number 65, Allah says, Fala wa rabbik. That these people are wrong. Rather, God swears by Himself. Like these people will never truly be believers. Hatta you until they embrace the authority, your authority, O Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fima shajara baynahum in the matters that they differ in. Thumma la yajidu fi anfusihim, and then they do not find a problem within themselves from accepting your verdict and your decision. And they always remain submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely and totally. So this is the study for today, the lesson uh, for today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true submission to Allah, which as we talked about, Allah grant us the ability to accept the obligations and the mandates of the of the of the religion. Number two, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to develop and cultivate our faith and our iman. Number three, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be swift and quick in implementing the obligations of this religion and what this religion requires of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be sincere and pure in our worship of Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm and consistent upon Islam in our submission to Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to die, leave this world, whenever that is, wherever that is, however that is. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to leave this world with iman, with Islam submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amin ya rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallahu fikum. I wanted to uh, mention something uh, for uh, everyone's benefit, inshallah. A program that we have been doing uh, for a long time here at Qalam. Um, and it's, alhamdulillah, a very beneficial program. I feel very blessed to be involved with it and a part of it uh, is called the Sira Intensive, where uh, every single year in the winter break, we would have this intensive 
really um, focused and high, you know, very uh, um, intensive program uh, with a lot of depth and a lot of very beneficial material. Uh, we've been doing this for many, many years. So Alhamdulillah, currently we are in the situation that we're in. Nonetheless, we wanted to still have the Sira Intensive for the benefit of the community and everyone out there. So inshallah, bi'idnillah, we're not going to let the pandemic uh, stand in our way. We're still going to be having the Sira Intensive, inshallah, this year. And uh, we'll be doing it online. So no matter where someone is, um, you have the ability to be able to uh, participate in the program, sign up for the program, and benefit from the program, insha'Allah, bi'nillahi ta'ala. So I wanted to share uh, the information with everyone. If you go to uh, qalamintensives.com, qalamintensives.com, I've shared the link for those who are watching online. If you go to qalamintensives.com, there you'll find the information on the Sira Intensive online. Uh, it says there very clearly. Um, go there, check out the program, inshallah. Uh, I'm certain that you'll find the program to be very beneficial. And so inshallah, for the first time, uh, we'll be doing it online. Uh, we're very excited about it. We think that this will be something very beneficial, inshallah, for everyone in the community. Uh, so go to the link, check out the program. We hope that inshallah you'll join us. Something very cool that we have at the Sira Intensive is we also have a part of the program for children, for kids. Sira Intensive for kids. Um, so I know that many of the kids are home. And so this will be a beautiful opportunity for kids to be able to benefit as well, inshallah. So please go there and check it out. And uh, we're really looking forward to the program. Jazakumullah khairan, barakallah fikum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So inshallah, um, uh, as we wrap up the program, I uh, wanted to uh, ask inshallah uh, if anybody had any questions. Again, um, the Sira Intensive uh, for this particular, um, you know, inshallah, this year, uh, this iteration of the Sira Intensive program, it'll be uh, during the winter break while people are off from school and a lot of people are also off from work. So it'll be about nine days inshallah so it fits right into the time that many people have off from school and work inshallah um but if you go to the website all the information is there you can check it out so inshallah if any uh, anyone has any questions uh, as always um you know i'd like to give salams to the south lake community i know that there was a tragic passing of a young uh, brother in the community um, so everyone in the community is very sad and we offer our condolences to the family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. Uh, but so wanted to mention that. And, uh, once again, as always, you know, we look forward to inshallah, uh, being able to can, you know, get back to having these sessions together, inshallah in the masjid there. Someone's asking, the Sira Intensive is done in the English language, in the English medium, so that it's open for a very large, wide uh, audience. All right. Very, very good. I hope and pray, inshallah, everyone is doing well. Everyone is doing good. Uh, stay safe out there. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep everyone in a state of strong iman. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve and protect everyone And uh, we pray for a safe uh, conclusion To the ongoing uh, stress of the pandemic uh, Amin ya rabbil alameen Jazakumullah khairan everyone Barakallahu feekum Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu